And so it begins. bring my tambourine. Three, four. Radio check, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Michael Butler Quarantine Show from Quarantine Studios. Uh, This is uh, crazy. We're still up here. I'm still with Lammy. We're still doing it live. Huzzah! Uh, joining me today, uh, this is going to be a very special uh, edition of uh, the Butts Show in Butts Show history. You know, this is not the first time that uh, my, uh, you know, today's guest has been on a show with me, but this is going to be a very special appearance because uh, Ricky and I have been sort of living very similar lives uh, over the last uh, year to a certain degree. And, uh, well, let's just uh, talk about it together. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome to the air the one and only Richard James. Ah. Yo, 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 yo. 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 Yo, 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 yo. How you doing, Ricky? I'm, I'm pent up, man. I'm pent up. Me friggin' too. <laughs> I mean, okay, here's another guy, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, Richard James. He's a singer. He's a pianist, keyboard player. He has multiple gigs. He plays in a band called Pink Talking Fish. He plays in a band called Neighbor. Uh, you know, and uh, he also plays in a band called Crew Orleans. Uh, and we, uh, that, you know, that's where our, uh, musical roads, uh, directly cross, uh, because so do I. But, uh, beyond that, uh, I've been watching what everyone and all our friends have been doing and everyone in the music community to, uh, bring music to the people and bring live streams to the people. And I see you over there in your quarantine setup. Uh, Ricky's got some, uh, a really nice piano setup and he's been delivering some music lately. Tell me about how that came together. That's right. Uh, well... You know, I, I was so down and out by this whole entire thing. And, like, I, I kind of forgot that that life will go on, you know, and music will go on. And, like, everything will just continue, but it will happen virtually, right. uh, you know. And and, and so, uh, you know, I, I, I saw these people kind of, you know, getting together and, and getting musical groups together and, and still doing things musically. So I scrambled. I got this big barn uh in the back of my house and you know i got a bunch of keys up there and i just kind of slapped together all my all my synths and workstations and just kind of uh you know i put something together i did like this this crazy drone set for like an hour over an hour just like of drone music just to kind of like try to like calm people down a little bit you know yeah just like no, no, no lyrics. No, no. I mean, I, I played, I, I sang a little bit at the end. I played a couple of original tunes, but like, just like an hour of just like, um, you know, that, <laughs> that, that, that kind of thing, man. And it, and it actually went over great. A lot of people tuned in and then I was like, okay, you know, so, so then, you know, I, it, I was slapped together in the corner of my barn and then I was like, okay, let's try to do this for real. And I set up like speakers. I set up a microphone. I like kind of I I pimped out my my setup a little bit up in the barn, and and I made it a little bit a little bit better so the quality of sound was better. People could hear me better. And then I played a set. You know, I, I played like, you know, I, I did like it was a, a, a midnight mass with Reverend Richard, and I did, yes. I, did I did like you know another hour you know, hour or so of, of music, of original music, of ballads, and kind of, you know, played everybody to sleep, just to kind of, just to kind of calm the air, you know, just cool the tension a little bit. Sure. You know? 
and uh, and it went over great. And, and you know, I, I wasn't asking for money. You know, a lot of people are like, put up, they put up their PayPal and their Venmo, and they, you see people doing that. And I didn't put up anything. I didn't put up any, you know, fundraiser or anything. But, you know, neighbor has such such unbelievable fans, and our fan base is so cool, man. They started posting because they buy merchandise and they right. they know what the pay they know what the PayPal address is and they know what the Venmo address is, and they started. They started like posting my PayPal address and my Venmo address. So, pe- <laughs> and all of a sudden, and all of a sudden, dollars started rolling in, man. It, it, it was unbelievable. Like just the amount, like h- how much that actually helps. Sure. You know, like because I, I'm a musician, I do this full time. I I have no I have no no income for the foreseeable future I mean, hey I don't you know. and me I both don't ricky i mean yeah. like uh just to just to jump in right there i mean me and lammy have been like you know i haven't put up the uh, venmo either yet but uh you know it's coming because like i'm not really going to make an elaborate pitch for cash but like if anyone's enjoying the show they can feel exactly. free they can they can feel free to buy me and lammy a sandwich you know what exactly. I mean? Like that's it. And, that's it. You know, you know and, and that's and that the truth is it's not to say that we wouldn't appreciate a sandwich right now because none of us have any income right now. And that's why we're here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, if you're gonna if you're gonna have a sandwich too, it's not like you go to a shop and get one. You gotta go to the supermarket and you you gotta make it your damn self. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. The fixins. I mean, I'm literally like sneaking in, like in com- full commando mode. Like it's like I, I, you know, Mission Impossible theme and everything. The second you even leave your door. You know, That's and right, I, and you know what? You know, you're putting yourself right in harm's way going into that supermarket. Man. I know, dude. <laughs> it's like I, uh, I want to. I'm almost. I, I've avoided the market for like the last five days, and I really do want some sort of, uh, you know, full body hazmat suit, even if it's just for comic relief. Like I want to walk in there. I want to walk in there like uh, Darth Vader from Back to the Future. Yo, you know what I yo. mean? Like remember? Oh like I'm not. Con- I'm not confusing uh, uh, movies either. The scene where Marty McFly comes in <laughs> wearing the hazmat suit, saying, "This is Darth Vader from the future." <laughs> Eddie Van Halen eruption. Vin, Vinny Puglisi. Vin Puglisi put. Like, he put a little video online of him going to Home Depot, and he was little. Like he had like a full mask like you couldn't even see a bit in his face like he had a full like snowsuit on with like gloves i want to like, wear like a suit of armor you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> just walking like a knife on the round yes. table dude I mean, I, I don't know what to expect. I feel like, uh, you know, that's one thing. I mean, I've been saying, like, people need to stay uh, creative with their quarantine, but I, I think they need to stay uh, creative all the way around in order to uh, keep, Absolutely. keep our mean, spirits this, up. This is the time, man. Make people laugh. Like, you know, like, I, I, even, like, you know, walking my walking my dog with my wife, we'll go for, like, a you know, three, four miles, and, like, I'll be, like, I'll see people, like, who are just, like, bugging out in their cars, and, like, I'll just do my... my my best to like make a funny face like at them just to try to make them laugh and brighten their day a little bit because you can tell people are just nervous you know oh my god i mean and it's going both ways i mean like you know people are very uh fearful of others and that's the thing we're trying to combat you know it's like you know when, other, when someone else shows up you know like people are uh you know scurrying their kids away you know and uh, it's a weird th- it's a tough time and uh you know people are being suspicious of others and then I know. you know especially uh you know I have to say it you know I have a friend who's a keyboard player he's been, he was a keyboard player of my uh wedding band and uh, you know he's Indonesian and uh you know people are like leaving buildings when he shows up mm-hmm. you know what I mean so like I, there's all yep. kinds of bad reactions to this that people are having so like it is man. I I mean you know it, it it's wild you know I know there's a lot of stories out there but you know and you can't believe everything you see but like in reality You know, I I heard this morning, like, uh, and this is real. This is real talk. I mean, yeah, my, you know, somebody that that my wife and I know, she's she's like 30 years old, man. She she went in, she got tested. She's in New York City. She felt sick and she went in, she got tested and she tested positive for coronavirus. And then like like a, a day, a day later this morning, she got admitted. She has like double pneumonia and like is is like fighting, you know, like it, it's real. It's real, man. She's 30 years old. You know, like it's not like, it's not like, okay, you're old. You know, this is real. Your lungs fill. And right. it's just, it's a, it's a scary thing that we're dealing with, man. 
Yeah. Not to bu- not to bug everybody. Hey, out, listen, that, man. But listen, it, it is. We real. can't not talk about it because I honestly feel uh, the, the percentages say that not enough people. I mean, if if it's not a hundred percent people taking it as serious po- as possible, that's not enough people. So as long as the that's math right. suggests that somebody out there might not be taking this serious enough, right? Uh, we need to keep putting that message out there. But not that's, to say that we won't keep making it light. So I mean, let's go. Uh, uh, you know, we, 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 we touched that base for a second, you know, but with like, you know, after and now we need to sanitize. Uh, <laughs> so uh, essentially, uh, let's talk about uh, Richard James. You know what I mean? I know you from back in the day. Uh, you had a band the first time I came across you and w- was uh, with you when you were playing the, with the name changers. It was Richard yeah. James and the name changers. Yeah. And, uh, you know, tell me a little bit about uh, who you were before you before that day. Like, where are you from? Tell me about, like, you know, uh, how did uh, you discover the piano? Why did you become a musician? Oh, I want this because we're going to work from the beginning and we're going to okay. get to we're going to get to the point where we both okay. had like residencies. And now we uh, are just waiting to get back there. So, you know, right. Right. Yeah, we're going to get. There. Well. Well, I mean, I, I started really young. I started I started when I was three years old. You know, wow. my I had I had a big I had a big church organ in my family in my family room at home, and nice. uh, yeah, it wow. was great. And, and, and my and my uh, my grandfather, I, my earliest memories are of my grandfather Carmen. Uh, he he would come over and he would he would fire up the uh, the organ. And like when he, when I heard, I heard all the, all the tubes start heating up and like, you just heard the organ turn on and you'd hit a note and nothing would happen. And then that note all of a sudden would go from nothing to, you know, it start, yeah. you, start, you, start to, you could feel it. You feel you know? it. And, and he didn't, he didn't, you know, he didn't care. He was awesome. Man. We'd have the thing on, on volume 10, you know, just, just cranked all the way up and making noise. It had, it had, you know, I Kick it, kicking bass when I was three years old, just stomping on. Yeah, it, you know, and and it was it was just like it was it was such it was such a thrill, and right. then and then and then you know my my parents were they were so supportive of me all the way you know from from day one, you know they like they they knew that I I had some kind of interest in music and piano and and they. Uh, and they, they went out and they, my father bought, my father was always interested in music. He was a big Elton John, Elton John fan. I and see. He went out. That's where yeah, you get it from. Yeah, ex- exactly. And he, he was, he, you know, he bought this baby grand piano. And uh, after I had all the interest in, and uh, he, I used to sit next to him as he kind of trudged his way through Elton John tunes and, and, uh, and I'd sit next to him. I'd listen to him, you know, play, don't let the sun go down on me. And, 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 you know, before, he, before he knew it, you know, he'd be coming home at night and, and I'd already have, you know, half of the tune learned just from sitting next to him. And, uh, and my ear uh-huh. was really good. Yeah. My ear was really good. And I, and I, you know, and then they were like, okay, we got to get this guy lessons. And I, and I was young. I just, I'll never forget her, man. I was like seven years old when I started or six years old, I started taking lessons. Debbie Johnson, shout out. Yeah. You know, from, from New Hampshire. Yeah, I ha- uh, I, I told a story yesterday, Rick, where uh, I did a where I had a ba- uh, my first talent show was like when I was like seven, and I played and sang uh, Castle Walls, but I never by sticks, but I, ne- oh. I, I never shouted out the uh, the, uh, the my piano t- uh, not teacher, but I had a babysitter who uh, was really cool and left that Grand Illusion songbook at the yeah. house and yeah. uh, that was Nadia Mahdi I wanted to shout her out just you made nice. me think uh, I owed that so go back go back nice. because you know honestly uh there's I also know that like you came up like uh you had some game as a, a pitcher I believe uh in baseball whoa whoa how'd you figure this out did I tell you that yeah yeah, yeah. man you know we're not strangers <laughs> to each other uh that's how it works you know what I mean so yeah, ba- uh, baseball baseball was my other was my, baseball and golf were my other loves Matt. see I love I love golf because golf was it was it's you I mean you know it, it, it gets competitive when you start when you start playing match play against other people but um golf to me you know whether there's somebody you know, you're playing against it's you versus the earth and it's you versus yourself and it's all mechanics. And it's the same way with baseball. Right. If you're a pit, if you're a pitcher, it's all mechanics. If you're a piano player, 
it's all mechanics. It's all the way, you know, everything. It, it's just, it's all practice. Yeah. If you, all... if, if you build lamps, it's all mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> That's, you know what? It's true. You gotta, you gotta wire each bulb the same way, or you're going to burn down someone's house. That's, that's just, that's yeah. be, I know? mean, Oh, by so, the way, so, uh, Ricky over here, he had, he, uh, actually has been, uh, been building lamps and they're yeah. amazing. They're not just like, you know, uh, the things that you get at target, you know, like, uh, that, that are functional. These are works of art. Um, is there any w uh, way, uh, we can like let people, uh, take a look and also we can even, Put up some. Uh, we can probably find some pictures of your lamps and uh, start putting them on man. the cast. I mean, if, if, you, if you go to point you go John, to, uh, point John. On, on, and, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. On face on Facebook, you can go to Rick James Inventions. I have, I have a page. It's it's called Rick James Inventions, and it's it's all of my lighting stuff. I mean, I, I try to keep current with it, but with everything going on and you know music and, and and everything else in my world, you know, I try to keep as current as I can, but. You know, if I if I make something, I'll post it up and I'll you know I'll, I'll put it up there on on my Instagram page. I have an Instagram page called Electrician underscore Musician, and uh, and that's where I also post all of my uh, all of my all of my creations and stuff. And it's just you know it's 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 lighting. It's just creative uh, industrial type lighting like steampunk. I, I use a lot of like black metal. I don't weld everything. I do everything by hand. And uh, I find old antiques and, and weird stuff, and I, I just kind of, I you know, I find I find funky ways to make your your world light up. And it's you know, a lot of people have, have bought my pieces. You know, I'll do stuff that's specific to you know, like photographers. I'll, I'll make a, like I, I love old cameras, like really old, like '50s type news you know cameras and like. I'll just gut the camera that, you know, find find different antiques that are just like they're not working. You know, they're just kind of disregarded. And I'll take them and I'll just I'll find different, you know, holes in the pieces where to wire things. Right. And just and just it, it's kind of it's kind of my get when I'm when I'm off the road touring. It's kind of like my thing, you know, just to just to kind of keep myself keep myself sane and and uh, and have and have fun and try to make a buck too, like doing it. You know, I, you know I, I've done things as big as building lighting for for uh distilleries and and just you know stuff for people's personal you know for their houses and for their rooms and and it's just it's been that's that's been it's been super cool man it, it, it's been a it's been a fun little foray you know for me and and and, and I, don't, I don't know how it really started i just i, I just i was moving from everett right uh, out, of, out of everett and it was right around then right when you moved in yeah, right. At, well, right when I was moving out, right. I think I was I was I was buying a house down in the North Shore, my wife and I, in uh, in Groveland, and we were uh, my wife's folks were selling the place that we were living in in Everett, and uh, and there was a bunch of like pipes in the basement, and I just started screwing things together, and I looked online i was like okay i see people making these like lightings out of you know steampunk things it, it kind of intrigued me a little bit and then i went online i learned how to wire correctly and talked to some electricians huh. and, and figured out how to do it right and then i posted some like whack thing with like you know a bunch of pipes like things sticking out and oh and then some guy from seattle was like hey man i got this this uh this rehearsal space where i teach drums and i need some lighting he's like that's super cool. He's like, can I buy that from you? And I was like, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? And he was like, yeah. And he's like, in fact, I need another one. So I was like, okay, drum studio. I took a bunch of symbols that I had in the basement too, that were just kind of disregarded. And I used the symbols as light shades. And yeah. like, and I, and I did, I did another piece for the guy. And he was like, he was like, man, he's like, this is so cool. He was like, you know, I'll, I'll pay for that. I'll give you 500 bucks plus shipping. And I was like, shit whoa you know like <laughs> so so that 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 kind of opened up a door for me where and i was like it, I, I, and then i went and like i got super into it i went to uh bowden college in maine because some guy was like some guy who was a maintenance man had all these pipes and these plumbing buckets and he was getting rid of all the pipes i went home that day he, he posted it on craigslist i, I spent like 250 dollars but took home like 2500 pounds in pipes fittings everything and i put them in my barn so now i got 
everything that I could want to work with, you know, p- pipe wise for the next 20 years. I mean, it sounds you know? like it sounds like you could like, uh, you know, like the A team could get shut in there with a militia outside and, could, <laughs> and figure and figure out a way uh, to like, you know, take over. I mean, yeah, we need um, guys yeah, like that right now. Anyway, it, sorry. It's go been, ahead. Yeah, it, it's it's been great. Just kind of. And you know what? It, it actually for times like this, it really, really. I'm really glad I got into it because, you know, like not only that, but it led to other things like woodworking and like, you know, now I'm 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 fine. Another thing that I'm doing is is building record cabinets, um, and 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 like, building these like you know building out these wood record cabinets where I can you know put speakers on them and I put you know a receiver and record player and uh, you know other spaces for actual records and I build out these. These beautiful, like, you know, sand down the wood. I, I, I take a lot of time, like, you know, making sure it looks great, staining it, polyurethane, right. and just, and, and these things are coming out great. And, I, you know, I've sold a couple of them. And on top of that, doing other woodwork, building coffee tables out of like old railway carts and like just, it's, it's really led to like a, a whole nother thing that I never, ever thought I'd, I'd, I'd do. But, it, you know, it's, and it's, it's been great. It's been so much fun. I mean, it's really great to hear about like someone really just like out of the blues uh, stumbling into a, a, a hobby that's unique. It's like there's no uh, manual out there. There's a lot on the first couple things people want to take up a hobby. I don't you know, they, they do all kinds of things. But, you know, it might not be the first thing on the list is uh, building lamps. So it's like, uh, yeah. and then all of a sudden, when you when you when when you're the the game in life is to be is to be as in tune to your nature that like you ride out its quirks and they and it, by encouraging wherever they take you, something great happens. Like yeah, man, and, and you know, well, I've knows? had a lot of great I've had a lot of great people along the way who have helped me. Uh, you know, there the there's this cat in a. Uh, He's in. Uh, he was in Missouri. He, he he's the guy who built built out my Leslie speaker for my organ, and he also built the uh, cabinet for my deluxe reverb for my clavinet. And this guy now he lives down in Florida. His name's Chris Koslowski. Shout out to Chris, man. I, shout out, he, shout out. You know he that that guy, man. Like if I have a question about woodworking about anything, he's the handiest dude, and he's just like you know anything I have. Any questions I have, I give him a call. He's so helpful. He's the man. So he, I, I got. By a, the way, I got a guy like uh, that sitting right next to me, Mr. John Lammy. He's Lammy, just like, dude. yeah, absolutely. You you know, if you it, when when in doubt, you know what I mean. Call Lammy. Yeah. Well, I I heard I heard him working hard before this this uh, podcast happened. Oh yeah, dude. I mean, we're, we're over here moving like at a at a very fast pace. You know what I mean? Uh, no uh, pretense between me and John here. We're in quarantine together, dude. Yeah. Imagine that. I mean. Yeah. It, I mean, but you know, you, back. I mean, back to music. You know, it it, it kind of it just it kind of kept it kind of kept just building and like it building and building it kept kept getting it kept getting uh you know, more and more interesting, the more and more music I started listening to and, and hearing all these different sounds. And then just, and then, you know, I think from the earliest age, it was like, it was Jimi Hendrix on an airplane. Remember when you were not on an airplane and they would have like 13 songs on repeat? Yeah. You, you, you flip through. And like, I remember Purple Haze was, was on the channel when I was like, maybe like six years old going to Disney World. And every i would line it up and make sure i put the headphones on every time purple haze came i'd never heard that song and it blew my mind yeah i came, I came home i went to the local record shop i bought Jimi hendrix posters i bought every Jimi hendrix tape i was just like you know like it just that guy blew my Jimi hendrix it just like yeah and still to this day like hearing hearing the hearing the guitars even though i'm a piano player like hearing a good guitar player just oh yeah just, just completely floors me yeah well for me for me by the way uh and i got i got somewhere i want to go with this is uh when i was uh six i was at a roller disco and i heard another one bites the dust and uh i just demanded that my parents like bring get me that get me this and i listened to like i got queen's greatest hits it was my only cassette for like a, a year i listened to it every day but uh, yep. you, you said something about great guitarists, and uh, you also said so we, we've been hearing about uh, you know your childhood home, and uh, there's like a, a segue there that I'm trying to make here. It's like uh, you've been involved in a new project uh, called Neighbor, and yeah. uh, I believe uh, you've told me that uh, it involves a great guitar player who was your childhood neighbor. 
Sure does, man. <laughs> yeah, that is uh, the uh, one and only Lyle Brewer. Yeah, yeah. Tell um, me about like obviously you you know I don't know if everyone knows that so tell a little bit about like how like the it's not just like a be nice to your neighbor name like you guys were actually neighbors and uh, how did that band come together and end up with its uh you know and now uh, it's uh, uh, I end up with its Tuesday night residency at uh, Thunder Road. Right on. I I got I got a good story um, and and I know all the neighbors out there who are listening will appreciate this. Um, Lyle Lyle's Lyle. It's it's kind of crazy how this all happened. You know, Lyle was always a musical dude. You know, he, he played the drums, he played the saxophone. Um, but he played the drums he, and he played the saxophone. Now that we can't just grace oh, yeah. over that. I mean, and does he still play the saxophone? Because I I would no, hear that. I, no, no, I don't think he does. But I'm sure he could. Maybe he like you know, like something like uh, like you know, like a Hall and Oates tune or something. Yeah, probably. I, mean, I, I certainly don't doubt it, man. Right. That that guy blows my mind on a daily basis. Uh, but you know he he um, we we played together in middle school uh, and, and just growing up in general like he'd be down my basement I'd be down his basement he had you know he had three brothers and everybody was musical that you know be jamming out it was always jam sessions and just playing you know playing all kinds of music anything we heard and just just jamming out and it was so great to to be his neighbor and. And uh, a good story about Lyle is, I hope he doesn't mind me telling this, but um, he, he, t he was telling me that his brother, because, you know, he had a, a couple brothers that, you know, the musical guys and, and uh, Lyle was like, if I'm, you know, if I'm going to be playing music with my bros, uh, you know, we got to be a band. And Sam, my older brother is going to be the guitar player. Well, I get to play the bass, you know? So Lyle, was gonna go his mother his mother um lined him up for for bass lessons and she was like you know they were on their way out sam was going to his guitar lesson while i was gonna have his bass lesson and they were on the way out the door and and his mother mary uh she she was like you know lyle which which guitar is the uh you know wh which one is your guitar down or which one is the bass down here and he was like it's, it's the one in the black case so she went downstairs she grabbed the black case she came upstairs they went to the lesson uh sam you know had his guitar he was going to his guitar lesson opened up the black case and it was a guitar it wasn't uh -huh. a bit and so lyle was like well i guess i'm taking guitar lessons <laughs> you know? i mean and, that is and amazing that was, and that was it and that was it from then on it was just like it was just like lyle lyle and the guitar were inseparable man and 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 like watching this guy blossom in high school with his band Grimace, you know, Dave Tanklevsky and Pete McElhinney and Andy Darty, like, you know, the, it was just they were playing like, you know, all these really, really beautiful written tunes. And they were it, just watching him play guitar. He was special from from day one. He's just such a musical Guy. Yeah, I just want to I just want to uh, jump in right here and uh, and just uh, okay. Obviously, this could have gone either way. We're all like so happy that uh, Lyle chose the guitar, but yet can we just imagine for a second what Lyle would have been <laughs> like as a bass player? That's a good point, right? You don't like, think about that. I just want to. Not it's it's worth thinking about. I'm not saying we need to like wish that it was the other way, of course, but like right. I just want to imagine for a second the bass player that Lyle would have been like I'm thinking you know like uh, somewhere around like Nate Edgar uh, meets like, like I, I think he would have I think he you know who I kind of I, I would think he would have like a very like Mark Hickox vibe Ooh, yeah you know like Mark, like I listen to Mark play uh, play the bass and I'm like damn like his that guy's groove like he's deep in it and I, yeah. I feel like I feel like Lyle would be the same guy with with the understanding of the bass but yeah like Lyle is the, the fact that that he's you know he he had the guitar during that lesson he, the guitar is such a more it's such a more versatile instrument you know it takes a certain individual to play the bass and it, and and with Lyle the fact that the the facility on the guitar is it's so there's so much more that you can do and Lyle is he's just such an exploratory guy that you know the guitar just suits him so well you know it's just it's oh yeah. great yeah
You know, and and so uh, yeah, so you uh, decided at some point. I mean, uh, what was the impetus uh, that, that got you? I know you were uh, perhaps coming off a, uh, a road. You had an opportunity to start a residency, and the, the opportunity might have been what led uh, to reaching out to Lyle to start a band. But yeah, it was. I mean, Lyle, you know, Lyle had been off the road for a while. Um, Lyle was on tour with with Ryan Montblou, and uh, okay. Lyle left the road with Ryan and, you know, he was doing his thing. He, he became a uh, professor at Berkeley School of Music and uh, and he was doing his solo thing. And um, Casey, my wife, who uh, is an amazing person, she decided to get me a lesson with John Cleary in New Orleans. Ah, yes, I remember that. Yeah. So I went, you know, I, she was like, do you want to do a Skype lesson or do you want to go like, do you want to do it in person? I was like, are you kidding me? I want to go to New Orleans. I right. want to go and I want to go and hang with John. And I want, you know, and it was supposed to be a 45 minute lesson. Right. And I ended up going into, 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 uh, and John, John actually, he bought, um, his, his home in New Orleans is a, uh, it's like it was like an abandoned hardware store. It's this huge space, um, and on the on the on the in the downstairs, it's a it's a big music studio. It's beautiful, and it had all kinds of like old funky antiques. And I was like a I was like a like a pig in shit, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. I walked in there, and I, I bought I bought John some sweets, you know, like some some uh, some some New Orleans like sweets you know at, at some at some chocolate shop and like and and i walked in there and and it from right from i was so nervous because it, it's like what do you when you're going to have a lesson with somebody that's your you know your idol a guy who's won a grammy award who's like your you know you respect everything that this guy what the hell do you go in there and talk about for 45 minutes you know yeah, music and right but <laughs> you know like but like chops like philosophy right. and music like Anything. hey hey man how Everything. did you win a grammy award you know like right. um there's and it and it ended up being like a five hour hang of course it was and it was just like you know i walked in and he was like would you like some tea you know <laughs> like uh yeah and we yes. just sat there we drank tea and we talked about we talked about you know my um aspirations as a, as a music what, what i wanted to achieve as a musician and and you know like where i was coming from and 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 why i was there and like and then we we moved over to the piano room from the kitchen and we just like he he, he took one of my tunes and we just we like he worked on one of my tunes this, this song called why i like you and we worked on it and worked on it and worked on it and some of the stuff i have like an hour and a half of audio you know of him just with that tune with me like uh, on on how i should approach recording this tune and and why you know why i should approach it this way and it was just so eye-opening man and like and then what we did is we just went and we he was like i want you to hear i want you to you know then we moved over to his record room and he had a record room that was just all the walls in his record room were just plastered with cha-cha records wow it was, it was crazy it was crazy and and we just sat down in that room and he just played he just played song after song and, and it was all uh, uh different arrangers uh, different different people who are arrangers for different records and would show me what these people who are you know how, what why people would arrange songs the way they would arrange them and certain it, it was just it was it was incredible so anyways i i came back from that with like a fire just lit under yeah. my ass, just like I gotta, I gotta get my original stuff out there. I, I've been doing this PTF thing for like five years. I love PTF, yeah. It's, but like for and, my and you soul, are not, and you are not alone, by the way. Uh, many yeah, people, man. many, many yeah. people it, who love PTF. Yeah, right? it, Pin talking it's, fish. It's, he's talking about. Yeah, it's it's such it's such it's such a killing bed, and I, I've been having so much fun, and I've learned so much just you know from being in that group and and uh, and. I just needed I needed something for my soul, you know, something something that that was original. Yeah, that I could I could just I could get out there, and I didn't care if I was playing for five people or five hundred people. It was just sure. So you know, I started a down the road brewery. I called Lyle. I said, "Hey, man," I was like, "I was like, you know, we we haven't played music since God knows when high school. 
we played a we played like a, a buddy's wedding like randomly in like 2004 or something like that and that was like the last time we had played music and and i i said you know let, let's try this man i got all these tunes and you know i've been listening to your original tunes let's let's do this let's put something together and it, it started like just playing cover tunes and playing some originals and just getting you know just kind of feeling each other out and like we got you know um zach berwick from pink talking fish and mike mixes mm-hmm. uh who's just mike mixes is a, a monster bass player man he and mike mike was playing with us and, and zach was playing with us and and we you know for 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 you know different reasons we ended up uh going different ways with with mike and zach but we um we grabbed dean johnson from club delph yeah um and, and then we Le- grabbed local legend him. absolutely yeah man god dean oh dean's a freight train man and and uh and dan kelly this this young this young bass player who's just hungry and he's so good man he's got he's, totally. he's, just, he's just in tune and he he's uh he's, he's a he's a great kid and he's he, he takes music seriously and you know we bring something to the table and dan you know dan does a great job with with all the stuff that you know that we had written and and this thing just kind of grew from like you know cover tunes you know a few originals into like me and lyle just like writing a boatload of of new original music you know lyle would come to my house i'd go over to arlington to his place and and we, uh, you know, he come to my barn and like we just write. And the stuff that, the stuff that came out of those those sessions, it was just like we were writing so much and 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 just like keeping in contact and sending sending music over, you know, over email and over. T- it was just it was constant and it felt so good. And it was just like before we know it, we knew it. And like in 2019, we had like 50 original tunes. Wow. You know, which is which is which significant. Is just, that is a significant yeah. amount of music. It's five. It's five records worth of like original music. You know, yeah. and at the length, at the nice length, going. At the at the <laughs> length, at the length of the tunes that we play, it's like seventeen or like Good, albums. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, because I have some of those MP3s here, and uh, that's what that's what we're looking like. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I'm I'm excited for that. I'm actually, uh, you know, we're. We're going long here, Ricky, but I mean, I'm having a great time talking to you. Uh, you know, there's no rules here in quarantine studios. I mean, we, there's no time slots. There's no nothing. There's nothing. Yeah. There's I'll, just, I'll, I'll, there's, I'll, there is I'll, only I'll Zool. What, I'll, 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 I'll tell you what, Buzzy, I'm having a really good time. I, I've just been waiting to talk to anybody. Right. <laughs> right. It's like, this is what I've been doing anyway. It's like each in their own turn. It's like I'm getting around to everyone and I know and I'm reaching out to them and be like, hey, bro, how are you? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, you know, whoever you are. I mean, I'm really uh, just it's important that we all like check in on everybody. I mean, I'm going to do it with uh, on air, as, but I'm doing this off air. And so should everyone else. Because absolutely. And reach out to me and reach out to Ricky, because like we're both like I can, you know, it's how we started the show. And it's what we're all feeling. We're cooped up up right now it's, it's, it's so true man it's so true it's crazy <laughs> well that's the thing is that each of us like plays a lot of shows and in particular we always play at least no matter what once a week at thunder road so yeah. uh without that release like that i have come like to uh, depend on that release and the people that come to our shows depend on that release and the gathering it, it achieves so many things uh that we that we need that we are guaranteed to get at least that once a week and uh, it's almost like uh, I described it to someone like, you know, it's just I, I've, I've stopped swimming against the current and I'm like lost in a stream. I don't know where it's going now. I don't know where we're going, but I'm just sort yeah. of waving to anyone who can see me out there. Like, hello. That's that's right. That's right. <laughs> hello. And, you know, hey, Butsy, I see you, man. Yeah. See you. Oh, well, word up. I see you, bro. I see you. I see you, you. Know? And, and yeah, th- you know, I, I think that what what we've all accomplished and and done at Thunder Road is is very significant within the the Boston music scene. It's huge. I mean, I you agree. know, I, I I don't know I don't know why it's special. How, I don't know why or how we were nominated for a Boston Music Award for our residency this Same. year. I mean, you you year, guys the year before you guys the year before were were voted you know for best music residency. You know the 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 year before and it's you know. You you got to understand that what we're doing is it's not just 
It's not just like, you know, yes, we're having fun and we're enjoying it, but it's significant. We're, we're, keep, we're keeping Boston music a lot. And, 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 especially in union square man i i mean that's that's kind of become like the little french quarter of like, yeah and, and you know Boston, man. I, I i read that post from steve morris because we were all unsure of what the status would be but it looks like we might you know have a little bit of time maybe not a lot of time but a but little, would you, a, but would a little you bit more time favor? yeah would you do me a favor do, do you have that quote from from steve morris or, or yeah can, i can, can pull you, that like, up can you would you because I, a lot of people don't know this, yeah. But a, lo a lot of people, especially in our world, with with all the neighbors, a lot yeah. of people were worried, and a lot of people were hearing rumors it was going to close down. We'd have to go somewhere else. But I was talking to Butts last night, and he read he read a uh, an article from Steve Morse. Yeah, was it? Well, let me just put it this way: it wasn't yeah, an yeah. article; it was a status on Facebook. But since he's going public with it. Then uh, and he, since he is a journalist, uh, you know, I would I would uh, expect that, you know, he understands that he's, uh, you know, he's he, he's telling the truth out there. So like he knows right. I, I trust this man. He's like one of the I cool. Do. He comes to like see. everyone's show. He's one of the biggest benefactors in uh, uh, one biggest uh, supporters of the arts uh, in uh, all of the area. Absolutely. So, yeah, I found it. Uh, he posted uh that it, i don't know where he got the information from but he says this was on march 11th like uh, basically the last day that there was this is when everything changed by the way it was march 11th i think was a wednesday and uh, we were supposed to do a, a lot uh you know our residency and march uh, 10th was our march 10th was our last tuesday yeah that was it that, yeah exactly so like 11th was the day we decided to do a live stream uh instead of a live show and we thought we were being like just like a, a extra protective for our people you know what i mean we thought like we were jumping the gun but maybe that was the smart thing to do but like Definitely the world changed you know and i and i honestly like we uh uh were very keen to get you to to find a picture of you wearing a marcus smart t-shirt uh you know because we're we're both uh, tremendously uh, uh, tremendous fans of marcus smarts uh, and we've all uh, we're all thinking of him because you know uh, it's news that he tested positive for uh, the coronavirus. One of the saddest one of the saddest days. Some somebody somebody texted me. They said, "Yo, Marcus Smart has coronavirus," and my fucking jaw dropped. I was like, "No," you yeah. know, like I mean, dude, what, dude, thirty six? Yeah, number thirty six. You know, I mean, dude. but number one in your heart, you know what I mean? Six, six foot three, 227 pounds, dude. Yes. Just like, you know. From Oklahoma? 2000, 2019, 20, like, that guy's, that guy's stats in comparison to his career. Uh, yeah, this, like, this, year's defensive play, this year's defensive player of the year, you know what I mean? Like, uh, the guy who, should, who was in consideration for it anyway. But, uh, 2018, anyway. 19, all defensive. 2014, 15, all rookie, dude. That guy... That guy's the real deal, man. Marcus, Marcus is the real deal. And and even before, you know, when Isaiah was on the team, I was always like Marcus Smart. I watched this guy play defense, and that he just he's yeah. a dog, man. Yeah, he's yeah. Mar dog. Uh, R Ricky was a, a big Marcus fan, a Marcus Smart fan, uh, long before he started hitting his threes. For anyone who just got on the the, the jumped on the bandwagon, so. Yeah. Anyway, let me get and, back to this uh, email. Other uh, this, uh, rather this. Uh, Steve Morse. Yeah, this the, the quote from Steve Morse. Okay, so for for all of you interested parties out there, all you fans of uh, you know neighbors and BD and BDF alike, uh, one. Uh, hold on one second. I'm gonna get D vibes into this because he's just coming in. Let's get him in here. D vibes. Uh yeah yeah. Yo, D Vibes, what's up, man? What's up, bro? How you doing? Ah. Good, good. How's, how's Colorado doing? We're building suspense. Man, Colorado is doing all right. You know, like that. We are in quarantine. Yeah, yeah, man. It was it was great running into you uh, over at Bianchi's place that night, man. Yeah, man. That's 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 my little spot, man. I do every Wednesday there. Nice. Wednesday night funk. The yeah. Wednesday night funk. Watermelon funk. Wednesday nights. Bianchi oh, yeah. Ripple uh, in Denver. Come, yeah, man. Come through. You know, you got to get over the hump. Got to get gotta over the hump. Over. All right. Well, D Vibes, I'm reading a. I'm, re I'm about to read a, a very interesting uh, quote here. So let's, uh, let, let's get back with the format here for one second here. I'm reading. Uh, so for those of you who are interested, 
uh, in the future of Thunder Road. Uh, here's a little bit of an update. Uh, not unofficial as it might be, but it is what it is. Looks like a stay of execution for Thunder Road, the well-liked music club in Somerville. It was thought to be closing this spring after developers bought it, but apparently the sale had been held up because it requires a zoning change. So the club is expected to stay open another year or two. The Tuesday residency with Virtuoso Band Neighbor is going well, and the Wednesday residency with Barely Dead continues to hum along. We need this place. I'm tired of seeing the arts get the shaft. So what I will get from what I get from that is that maybe they're trying to get rid of us, but they're not going to get to do it as quickly as they planned, and maybe we have a no, chance to uh, you know show uh, to to just enjoy this so much more. We're losing time right now, is what it is. We want to be there enjoying that time, but. We're going to, and who knows if this is going to change that in any way because all bets are off right now. I mean, money is not coming into that venue, and as much as we want to believe that th we're just going to turn the lights back on and everything's going to be the way we left it, we're going to have to realize that it's going to, you know, we all just have to pray that it's that easy. Hey, man, it's going to be that easy. I'll tell you why, man. Go for it. Because one, one, I have the faith to know. Two, I'm realizing that this is not only impact. This has impacted every venue in our country, every last one of them. Without question. Every last, every last one of them, and there is no way, there is no way that anybody in this world is going to let all these venues shut down. Well, maybe not no all way. of them, but you know, listen. I, I, listen. The thing that strikes me the most is your faith, because I believe in that. I don't have to believe in much in this world, but I believe in your faith. Okay, D vibes. So I'm with you on this. Yeah. Um. And so, look, that's D vibes, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I think I'm going to come back with D vibes and uh, Dex from around the world on the other side of a music break. We've been talking with Richard James, uh, keyboardist, singer. Uh, He's in the band Neighbor. He's in the band Pink Talking Fish. He's got a live stream. And the name from, changes. And the name changes. That's right, D-Vibes. Richard James and the name that's, changes. That's my favorite one you do. See? That's my favorite Well, you're going to get to check like, out Neighbor. I, like I don't that, even know. Vibe. Say what, uh, Say what, Ricky? I said I like that, Vibes. You know. Yeah, so I, got, I actually uh, got a tune over here. Uh, so I'm going to... Jump to break in a minute. In a second, you know, tell us a little bit about this tune. Uh, Why I like you by Neighbor, I believe, or is this just you solo? Yeah, yeah, no, this is this is the uh, this is the band. I mean, we we went into the studio. Uh, speaking of speaking of Union Square, I mean the ABs. This is uh, Aaron Bellamy, uh, bassist extraordinaire, hit me up, and he was like, "Hey, man, you know, I'd, I'd love to record." Uh, you know, a, a track or two with, with your band neighbor. So we went in and we, uh, we recorded this tune, uh, why I like you. And, uh, we, we had a, we had a good time. We had a good time in the studio and, and, and we got it done. We had, it, it's just, it's, it's a good, it's a good feeling tune, man. It, it's, it's, it's got really super positive vibes and it's, it's just, it's nice, man. It, 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 it feels good. And a lot of the fans, like it's one of the fan favorites, man, because, it's just this. It's just this. This feel good song, man. You know. Yeah. So well, you definitely yeah, dis man. you definitely displayed all the reasons why we like you, Ricky, tonight. So thank ah, you. Hey, thank you, dude. I love you, and I cannot wait until we are back where we belong. Tuesday night, neighbor. Wednesday night, barely dead at Thunder Road. Uh, thank you so much for calling in. Uh, this song is "Why I Like You" by Neighbor, and uh, we'll love be right you, back. Thank love you, you too.
that time we both got so high I put the fan on upstairs for some air While you looked in the mirror and played with your hair You buzz around like a bee Your blue eyes look like the sea So in love that it hurts to be me. I can't believe that this sweet love is for free. I know, I know why I like you. I know, I know why I like you. I know. Tired. I took for granted this thing we call fun. Now I'm an outlaw without any gun. You know I'll never dispute. This love is strong like a When it's hot, I'll cool you down. I ain't walking out the door without coming back for more. And if you're mad, I'll make you laugh. And if you're sad, I'll make you smile. It's those little things you do that make me want to be with you.
Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Michael Butler Quarantine Radio Edition uh, Butts Show. Ladies and gentlemen, in grand Butts Show fashion, first of all, once again, Richard James, ladies and gentlemen. That was such a fun talk. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the song. That was nice to be able to play a song over the years. It's like slowly but surely... We're getting this format back to uh, something that feels like a real radio show. I mean, I realize that there's a video component, uh, and that's how I'm getting it to you, but, like, you know, you don't need to look at me. Like, you can feel free to, like, you know, fade down the image uh, and... Don't look at me, I'm hideous. No, you can feel free to fade the image and uh, just treat this like an audio component because that is nuts and bolts at the heart of all this. And it's like... uh, And who better to join me uh, on uh, a, a radio venture, but the two guys who I love doing radio the most with, Dex Monday through Friday Tur and T Vibes. You guys with me? Can you hear me? Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I wasn't yeah. sure if it was my turn to come in. It's all okay. You're right. You're right. Uh, I don't know. We have to work that out. This is hard to do. Uh, to have like in-house uh, radio partners that aren't in-house. It's like, this is quarantine radio. That's hard. My goodness. Yeah. Well, you know, Ricky uh, is like hard at work in in his quarantine lab. Like, you heard what he's working with over there. He's got like a barn where he's got like a music podcasting center. He's got like a lamp studio with like enough supplies uh, for MacGyver to take down a small militia. Before he even started he the lamp studio, he's or the guy who could light up the world. Now he's actually making lamps. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> I dig it. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, you know, D-Vibes, we know D-Vibes is out in Denver. He's been making tracks. Uh, we've all been doing our best to keep our quarantines creative, but, like, Dex is in a completely Bro. different show uh, uh, situation. Oh, what are you going to say, D-Vibes? What you got going on? Man, dude, they put the wrong dude in quarantine. It's like, um, Alicia B to just be making beats, bro. It's like, I, I don't know if you heard, if you know, to all the masses out there, to all the millions and, and the millions, millions of the D Vibes fans out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm going to get ready to put out all this heat that I've been sitting on. Right now is the perfect time. People ain't got nothing to do else but listen. Hey, D Vibes, you know uh, you can uh, you can send me uh, MP3s while we go here. Oh. You know, like I don't know uh, where we're sending them. I guess to my email. B U T Z Rage, yeah. You know. Uh, I, I, I can send you one. I, I can send you live last last one. Yeah. Submissions you know, there. Pe- it's people, out there. People should be following me if you're listening yes. on my Spotify. Follow D Vibes on Spotify. Follow, follow my D Vibes. Follow my Google, my Amazon, Amazon Prime. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wait, how does follow someone? Wait, how does someone follow an Amazon Prime D Vibes? Hey man, you know. <laughs> It, it you get you get a different you get a different feature when you when you add me on Amazon Prime you know it's maybe like, I come and like, I play piano at your house okay oh okay and, that's and interesting Amazon Prime you know boom you know? uh <laughs> yeah uh yeah can I uh, can I borrow your Amazon Prime because like I think there's a couple shows on there I, I, that I want to watch while I'm in quarantine oh, I don't think oh, you should let I, I don't think you should let the whole listening audience like sometimes <laughs> I'll give it up for. I'll give it up for the public, but you know that doesn't mean you have to, you know. And I don't have an Amazon Prime, so you don't, you can't share yeah, no, it. No, I said that they could get my services on Amazon Prime. I, I, didn't I, say I get it. I get I it. Have, I know. I, you know. But I I'm, want I'm, your I'm, Amazon I'm, Prime. <laughs> yeah, I don't have Amazon Prime. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. Guys. Yeah. What's up, Texas? Yeah. I got Amazon Prime. Oh. oh. Yeah, I'll, I'll DM you. Oh, I'll yeah. DM you. Slide into my DMs, bud. <laughs> yeah, that's Come it. On. Coming through with the shows and the, and the next day delivery. <laughs> there yeah. we go. All right, guys, this is going to be a thing going forward, okay? You know, like you guys are my co hosts through thick and thin for life. 
Like like the NWO, you both know what that means, okay? Oh, so, 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 I'm Scott yes. Hall. Right. I'm so, Scott Hall. I don't know what it is, but we're all going to have to, like everyone has to be responsible for their germs. I need you guys to be responsible for your background noise. Okay. <laughs> all right. Got you. So tighten it up. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. We admit. You know, Dexy and both of you, I think it's pretty cool that, uh, you know, the only thing, the only form of entertainment beyond this particular radio show that is managed, and, but that, and I don't even count because I didn't exist before this happened. I'm here just as, like, just to keep sane. This is me staying sane for, and everyone's joining in and helping, and that's why I have the best friends in the world, guys. Thank you. But uh, honestly, uh, the only uh, form of real, of like, you know, mainstream entertainment, let's say, that's kept continuous through all this is the, uh, the WWE. They've gone on the oh. air for all their shows, and WrestleMania will go on. Yeah, bro. It's pretty you know It's why? something. It's Vince McMahon you know being why? stubborn, but it's, it's amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you why. The show must go on vibes. What is this? Is that what you're going to say? Dude, Donald Trump was in the WWE for that's a true. second. So he gave them all. They have the cure. They ah, have the cure. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> I, you know what? You know what, Vibes? I just like, I, you know, I, I don't know where, what direction your brain is going in there, but, like, the fa I can see that it's working, okay? One way or the other, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what you're, if it's right or uh, wrong or up or down. Right, I don't know what's bro. up. He I don't know what's right, down, dude. Dude, but he I know. Took it, he got the Stone Cold Stunner. <laughs> They, they were all like, uh, you know, doing beers, uh, doing stone cold beers in close proximity. A couple Steve Weisers. Steve Weisers. That's a thing. Steve. Broken Skull IPA, I guess it is. Man, I bet you that. I bet you it tastes so nasty. I, 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 right. I don't know. They're probably all right. I mean, dude, if I got that, dude, I would say the first thing Stone Cold would say. Eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> you go ahead put that back <laughs> oh, so uh anyways i want to get into uh, this uh really hilarious. quick uh you know because i don't know how much time uh we got left for uh tonight you know uh i went a little long with ricky and i i don't want to make these too long but it'll go as long as it has to but uh you know i i really do want to pick up Today we're going to do another uh, quick little check-in with Dex uh, on Dexy's Choice. This is a special, uh, uh, another edition of Dexy's Choice. I just want people, we're not going to go too far on this. Uh, we've just been talking about it, Dex and me, and we know that, uh, you know, he's got, like, to, till Tuesday, just like the band, to decide on whether or not he takes, like, the last plane on which he has a ticket from Australia to America. Uh, his options are, do I stay in Australia and get a place and, and correct me at any point if I'm wrong about all this. Uh, do you, you know, do I stay in Australia, get a place and I think you said Brisbane, Brisbane? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'd be, it'd be Cairns is where I was thinking about holding up. Okay. And it's relatively. It's a tropical uh, paradise. By, by American standards, it's, uh, you know, uh, very affordable and reasonable, and you'd have a, a very wide uh, space, a, non, uh, a very non-affected area to sort of lay low for the next couple months. Yeah. Uh, and, and by the way, number uh, choice A is something that a lot of us here on the inside are all fantasizing about. Okay. Yeah. It really sounds kind of nice what you could what you could do. You're in prime position. You've been out in Australia since December uh, for work, and uh, yeah. your uh, your professional commitment has been canceled, like most things, but only just recently. And mm -hmm. you have the opportunity to come home, and that is uh, choice B. Uh, as scary and wild as it is, not even knowing where you're coming to. Home is home. You won't be able to come home uh, until they uh, lift any sort of travel ban. This is like shit or get off the pot. You know what I mean? In, in its purest uh, form. It's like you either got to come home or you're going to have to stay there for a couple months. Decision coming Tuesday. Home is uh, what it is, uh, but it's home. And the people you love are here. And uh, you also want to be... Uh, 
you know, a part of, uh, you know, what's happening here. This is this is what it is. I don't know if we want to even get into, like, any germ theories about the benefits of uh, <laughs> being in America, but whatever that might be, I just want to know, you can... Uh, I think we, I did this yesterday, and I had people, like, shower a bunch of likes right now if you want Dex to stay in Australia, and a bunch of hearts if you think Dex should come home. Uh, you know, part of his options, he's got options here. He's You know, we're going over the, the nuts and bolts of it. Uh, but we really just uh, want Dex to be safe, but we also want Dex to come home. So it, it, it's, it's just like anything else. I want to go visit my parents. But I'm staying away from them. So I want Dex yeah. here, but maybe he needs to stay away from here. But I don't know. But does that mean he has to go be halfway around the world? Would you want to be? Would anyone of of you uh, listeners uh, want to be halfway around the world from your loved ones without uh, any opportunity to be able to come back for a couple months? This is Dexy's choice. You know, in the in the words of the Wu Tang Clan, the saga continues. I just don't know. It's every single day there's something else. You know, they've got the they've got the the border closed here. Nobody can get in. Right. They have a relatively low outbreak rate. The place that I'm thinking about going is on the Barrier Reef. It's a jungle paradise. Right now it's completely deserted and desolate. So you can get like super cheap housing there. Places that would cost eight hundred and fifty dollars a week are looking at like seven hundred and fifty dollars a month right now. Um, oh, come on, get the, that. See, that's, that's you, Divine. Well, oh, 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 wait. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, the other side of it is coming back home. Obviously, home for me is New Orleans, but right now, New Orleans is like number two on the on the dangerous places list. Right. I've given my residency down there because I was set to be on tour for so long that I really, effectively, when I come back, I have no place to go unless I get like an Airbnb or a hotel. I will have to quarantine for two weeks. Right. Whenever I visit Rhode Island, which is where I was born, where whenever, whenever I visit there, I always stay with my mother. But my mother is the medical director of services and the health facility, so she is completely locked down from outside contact that could be contaminated. So that's not an option for however long the quarantine process is. Right. And she's got no. I've been offered that, which is great because I can just gas up and hit the apocalypse should the events come. I like the sound of that because you said that to me and then, you know, should you be able to even like come up here, you could be like in quarantine outside. Do you know what I mean? And we, yeah, we, 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 could, we could feed a live, like a, like a webcam through the window. Get a couple of, get a couple of soup cans and a piece of string, bud. We've done it. We know how to do this. <laughs> Dude, we know how to do this. And that's the funny thing, Dex, is that like wherever you end up, you, we're going to keep doing this, bro. Like, this is, like, for real. Like, uh, Dex and I uh, on WEMF used to have a show called Dex and Butts, and it was uh, a blast just to do this every day with you. And uh, we used to do it. We used to do these shows and ha and talk to all kinds of musical acts. Uh, and uh, we used to call it the Musician's Morning Show because uh, musicians never really woke up till the afternoon anyway. And, exactly. And, uh, you know, true. nowadays I feel like this is still the musician's morning show because, like, since we've gone into quarantine, it's like I've just, like, succumbed to my natural, uh, you know, vamp life uh, schedule. And I'm, like, getting up. I'm getting up, like, later and later. I'm getting up. Like, I'm finally ready to, like, talk to somebody at 10 p.m. <laughs> you know, like 11 p.m. It's become every day. It gets a little later. Like I'm a little fresher. Like I was really shaking off the cobwebs when I went online at 11 p.m. today. And I'm gonna be up all night. So that's. But what does it matter? It's down is up and up is down. All night long. All night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess all that's night. really it. Like uh, at the end of uh, all night. I'm sorry, guys, but uh, well, when Dex. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when uh, Dex, uh, you know, whether he goes to Australia or whether he comes home, uh, we're going to be uh, in close contact here because I don't know if anyone's really going anywhere, wherever they are. You're going, uh, you're staying in quarantine. It's like quarantine A or quarantine B, basically. Yeah. It's, it, it, the other thing is, and I'm not going to, like, we're not going to jump on the whole germs thing. There's some crazy shit that's coming out in America, too, like, granted, you and I were talking about this. Neither one of us are particularly big gun people, but uh, they're starting to change how long it's going to take to get like uh, a weapon, which at this yep. point would really only affect law-abiding citizens. Right. And then on top of that, they're talking about right. Uh, gun nuts already have the gun. 
yeah, the gun nuts have the gun. And right now they're talking about removing habeas corpus, which is like, that's like the fundamental constitutional thing, you know, like. Well, they can yeah. just take you and throw you in jail right now. That's Trump's Department of Justice has uh, put in a petition to remove, like, um, you know, a, a, a judge having to stay to say that you stay in jail if you're arrested, just being able to be arrested and put in jail until this all passes over. These aren't seeming like very exciting times in America to come back to. It, aside from the fact it's, that all it, my it's people- not exciting times anywhere, man. The, yeah. the, corona, the, the corona, corona is running rampant, man. And it's it's shutting down the whole world. Man. Yeah, so to, for, it's, it's, yeah, go ahead. It's a sad thing to see, man. And in 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 America, man, like a lot, of, like we haven't been taking it as serious as it needs to be taken. Without question, we are. I mean, uh, not not enough people it, are taking it uh, as serious as it should be. It, the only way because, it's gonna be it's gonna be taken care of is if we uh, take it as serious as we can for. Uh, a real concentrated month or two, at least. I mean, not it, it doesn't have to be a month. No, it's gonna like be a three, month. At it's least, gonna be a month. At least two. like three weeks of like just like no contact, <laughs> like like you know, like just go to the grocery store, or, like go like get your medicine. But like besides that, don't like people are having barbecues or hey, you mean out. weed when you say when yeah. you say medicine, you mean weed, yeah, yeah. I do. No. No, he doesn't. I mean, he like, doesn't because... mean it. He doesn't mean that. We mean that. That's our medicine. Everyone needs their medicine. Whatever. I mean, well, dude, like th- those stores won't close down, man. They're not closing down anyway. Are the local? So here's the other side the local, of it. Yeah, the other side of it. What I'm saying is that I think I think Butsy's, you know, two month estimate is is a little bit more accurate personally, just seeing the way it's gone around the world so far. And you hit the nail right on the head where you said America's not taking it very seriously. I feel like right now I'm in a place that's taking it very seriously. They've locked down the borders. They're controlling the spread of it. There haven't been any natural cases. Every case here has come from overseas. The borders are now locked. They'll be able to control where it is, how it is, if it's something that can be controlled like that. And on top of that, you know, you mentioned it in the comments there, uh, Jeff, Jeff dropped it. It's paradise over here. There's potentially a chance to go sit in a rainforest or go and uh, I don't know, man. It's it's just it's such a tough freaking choice. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm the more I think about it, it's like Donald Trump is like the biggest reason uh, to stay where you are. You know? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like I, <laughs> I think like when we have all these pros and cons, the way I framed it, uh, but the one wild card in all this is. Uh, yeah, Australia is doing the right thing right now, as you said. I don't think we're going to function in quite as orderly a fashion, if you ask me uh, honestly. I think it's too late. Yeah, it's going to get a little sloppy around here. And maybe, Dex, I think we all would agree, uh, we're going to keep you in the loop if you stay out there. Now, if you come home, you know we all are going to be happy or safe either way. So... That, yeah. But I, if you ask yeah. me today, you know what I mean? Like what you just said about Australia being like, you know, doing all the right things and being in a remote place, it'll calm down there. Who knows what's going to happen here? Okay. But uh, right. regardless, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it could be a little sloppy now. Uh, who knows, dude? But I'm not yeah, letting if it gets, you yeah. if, Go ahead. Yeah, I love, first of all, Rowan, killing it with the pictures. I love the constant picture changes here. It's like... It's hilarious uh, <laughs> with the live feed. Yeah, oh, um, Lammy's doing it. Yeah. Oh, Lammy, you got yeah. Lammy in there. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, killing it, Lammy, killing it. Um, but that's the other side of it is that if I'm if I'm over here and I wish I was back there, chances are I can get to a point where eventually I'll be able to get back there. But if I'm over there and I wish I wasn't there, there's going to be no chance to leave. You know what I mean? And it's that's just all the choices seem like they're very forever based choices right now. And I'm I'm a guy that really you know. I don't like the, the idea of forever. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know what's going on as far as, uh, you know, I hope that there's a round one and that we can brace ourselves and then, it, you know, it comes to a conclusion and then we can brace ourselves for the future of round two. And if we do, you know, I think it's key if we can uh, push it back and buy ourselves some time. I really do think we'll figure out how to deal with this one. Uh, 
Uh, so I uh, honestly, like, you know, D-Vibes has his faith that I trust in, and my faith is telling me that we're going to be around this particular virus, and within, like, the next year or two, uh, life will get back to normal. Uh, and, and it will. Uh, however, uh, life will never, uh, we, we're, we're never, we can never forget this experience. We're in it, and no. guess what? And even, like, our kids will know nothing about this. Uh, and you know some people's kids will, uh, but the the, the kid you know the future uh, future's kids, uh, will because of, I forget how old I am not to have kids. You know, like it'll be my kids' kids. <sighs> yeah, my, my grandkids. Will, they'll all your grandkids will all never know. Like, <laughs> they'll just look at you one day and they'll be like, "Hey, Uncle Butts," or "Hey, Daddy Butts." Can you yeah. explain to me why so much goddamn good music came out in 2020? <laughs> yeah, right. Can you explain to me why, like, why, like, yeah, right. I mean, I don't even know. Like, what, what, what is that thing that they're doing? Uh, like when they have their arms around each other. Yeah. You know, like that. Yeah, everybody's done with, done with pants, done with hugging. We're just we're moving on to a, just a completely comfortable and probably mostly naked society. We've got to imagine just about everybody out there listening has minimal clothing on. You're in front of a camera, so I'm guessing from the waist up you're fully dressed. But, yes, from the waist you know. up. That's 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 not me over here in Australia. I'll tell you that. Oh really? Behave. Well, you know, I got the shirt off. I got the shorts on. There's no socks or shoes. You know, you Just, had. Uh, you know, you're you're setting the, the internet on fire when you do that. I saw some comments from the other day. Uh, you know, talking yeah, yeah. Uh, talking about people who want to be like you know quarantined. You know, like uh, you know, like that. The, the, uh, other, I'm not the only one who would break uh, quarantine for you. Apparently, you know. So like well, you, 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 you you know like you better be careful out there because uh, you know like listen, uh, anyone who wants to make a better make Dex a better offer than uh, than, than than A and B that he's got out there that's Dex Monday through Friday tur uh, you know I'll say it like we couldn't say it before Dex motherfucking tur folks you goddamn right oh my goodness gracious it feels and good and listen I'm the guy I'm the guy that only we can hang around and have a good conversation I can cook people but let me tell you something. I'll clean those dishes too. Oh man, I mean, look, no. make them a better offer, folks. You know, like <laughs> you got till Tuesday. We're gonna be on the air every day, and I'm gonna try to figure out uh, what makes the most sense here. We're gonna go all the way down to the wire. I don't think he's ready to slide that ticket back two days early. He's gonna hold it like no, a well, like, like a real gambler. You know, like like he was Doc Holliday uh, with a peach of a hand. You know, I hate to say it, but you gotta know when to hold them. Uh, you gotta know when. To hold them. I know. I know it fit naturally. I wasn't trying to do that. You know what I mean? I didn't. I didn't drop a. Just checked in to see what condition or oh, nothing. You know. My God. It's a brutal one. It really is. We don't like to bring around the sadness in these times. But I also it went without saying yesterday that we had that very fun and lively discussion about that night of gathering of the vibes. Yes. Start talking about LJNs a little bit. I know Nikki's got an LJN. I believe she's got the Piper LJN. Okay. And that same night at gathering of the vibes. <laughs> You and I had ourselves a good cry because that was the night that the rowdy one left us. Oh my god, I totally remember that. I'm so like crying now, thinking you about it. You that, was like a, that was like a devastating morning. It was like, oh my god. You came up to me and you were like, I don't, I don't want to tell you, but I got to tell you. <sighs> oh my god, it was a brutal one. Oh my god, it was a brutal one. Yeah. I totally remember but, that. Uh, but so so for a me update, as far as like moving forward, let's lay it out like this. Tomorrow, I'm supposed to fly to Melbourne, which is where I would have to catch my trip on Tuesday that goes back to the United States. So I fly out at two o'clock our time, which would be like, I don't know, it's like midnight your time or 11 p.m. your time. So I can get in on before the flight. We could talk about it. Tomorrow, the consulate also opens, so I'll call and I'll get some answers to that one. And then tomorrow, I'll find out whether or not the option is even there for me to switch my flight until around June 1st. So I'll, I'll definitely have some answers tomorrow. A few answers. I don't know which way it'll go, but there'll be, there'll be factors. They won't necessarily be answers, but there'll be factors in the decision. Okay. Yeah, and, you know, we'll talk again about that. We'll just lay it out there, man. The saga continues. Yeah, the saga continues. And either way, we, you and I discuss this, whether it happens, uh, I'm not sure which social platform or which means of media, but when I'm coming back into these United States that y'all are sitting in, you can believe that I'll be live on something or I'll be videoing something, and you'll see exactly what the process is like on the very real coming back into the country, how serious it's being taken at the border. 
you know, if, if I do, if I do go through the experience of being on one of the very last flights that leaves Australia back for America before shit gets locked down, you better believe we'll all go through that together and see what it's like. Yeah, I mean, I can't even imagine what we're gonna find, but yeah, like let us know, and uh, uh, we can like we're figuring out how to carry video feeds. Uh, you yeah. know, so uh, uh, we'll figure out a way. We'll, we'll, we're the right guys to figure out all these workarounds. So we, we, right. we have we have what we have, but we're gonna make it work for us. So uh, if you you know we'll be able to ca- we're working on carrying live feeds and every like I say every day we sort of assimilate a new technique uh, like the Borg. <laughs> so, hey, uh, yeah, you said Borg. You reminded me of Korg. I know a lot of people have shared this out there, but for musicians out there that are bored, mm-hmm. was it Moog and Borg have made their uh, their apps free? You could download their music creation apps. And uh, that should get you through a little bit of time. There's a lot of a lot of really good content out there. I know that like Dungeons and Dragons online for all you nerds out there, uh, they're they're making a lot of their content free. There's a lot of different companies that are making some of their content, and some of their games, and some of their creative type software available for this uh, upcoming renaissance that we're all about to go through. Because that's the key to it here, is to use this for for positivity. You know. Yeah, I'm with that, and and uh, especially. It's the opportunity to take some time to feed your brain. I mean, there's like, yeah. uh, forget about the outside world. All people who, who practice meditation are, are able to like uh, let their inner awareness uh, sort of take the take the the lead and let the outside world dissolve. Like, find your inner strength and let your and uh, and your in, and develop the power of your inner world. So, like, when you read, you're uh, you're, you're leaving your body. You know what I mean? You're you're using the power of your imagination. Uh, you know, uh, take information in. Be creative. Uh, get information out of you. You know, if you ever thought that you wanted to be a writer, you know what I mean? Try to write a short story. You know, start this with a time. couple pages. Like, have an idea. You know, it's a yeah, very... on the other side, I'll give a shout out. My favorite bookstore on the planet is a is an online bookstore called thriftbooks.com. Uh, you can get really cheap books. They deliver them right to your house. It's a really cheap delivery fee. Keep that brain fed. Absolutely. Uh, keep your uh, quarantine creative. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. what it is. That's going to get us through this. Uh, I'm going to get out here because, honestly, like I said last night, I've been watching other people's, uh, you know, uh, internet shows or their, their their shows from home, and we're all on the same playing field. So, uh, you know, uh, that's what it is. What's going on here? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe was vibes out for a minute. Vibes back. No, 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 no. I think I'm I think I'm getting uh, some sort of call at the same time, but like it, I don't know which which button to hit. <laughs> hit no button. I'm hit gonna no hit. Buttons. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm not hitting any of them. So uh, I want to give a shout out to yeah. Divide Spotify. I've played it over here in Australia. It's been played over in Saudi Arabia. I got to tell you, just about anybody can get down on that funk. So don't be afraid to check that shit out too. Absolutely. Yeah. No, once again. Oh, and and uh, you know, I should also say that. Uh, Let's see. Oh, I think I lost D vibes, and I, I think I see what happens. Okay, we did lose D vibes. That's what that was. All right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. anyway, uh, this is a good opportunity to get into the idea that, uh, you know, Ricky said uh, about the Venmo before that, you know, all of this has been done as a labor of love and a means of uh, keeping us sane. First and foremost, that's what this is for me. And, uh, you know, but. Like I, uh, the reality of all of this is, we all have a story, and we're, we've all been sidelined from our regular routines and lives. Uh, and certainly, uh, all of my work, I, I'm a multi. Uh, I, I have I have several different uh, gigs as well. Uh, a lot of people know me from Barely Dead, but I also do a lot of Sinatra gigs around town with uh, the Bruins organist Ronnie Ron Poster. And uh, you know, like, and uh, it's really uh, he's a. Uh, it's it's. Uh, I've get, let go of all my other gigs aside from Barely Dead, except for that one, because it's such a pleasure to play that music and to play it with Ron, who's got a real touch for it. And, uh, you know, like, honestly, uh, yeah, I love staying busy. I love gigging. And, uh, you know, th- that's always what I want to do. Uh, you know, I talked to the guys in Barely Dead about, you know, uh, our future and how, uh, you know, we're pushing 
to like gig more and more and more all the time because I, I would really love to live in a world where I could just play music every day and, th and that would be enough. And even like on my days off, like still play music and that would all, all I'd be uh, expected to do every day. And that's, that's the world that, and that's, I, I was getting there, you know, I think we were all getting there. And uh, especially uh, talking tonight about our residency at Thunder Road uh where we no matter what we always get to be around us and the people who come to see us uh every week uh and uh, without fail and it's been uh something that uh you know that i that we've all grown to depend on for uh you know years now and uh to see to see to you know to no one ever expected to have to not have something like that we had, you know, we, we were so lucky we had something like that. And uh, here we're time out. Everything's been put in time out. And, uh, you know, I don't know how we're supposed to fill these voids. So uh, I'm desperate to, like, do what I can to sort of push that, you know, push something in its place. And, it, you know, I don't know what it won't take the place. And we're not going to let it take the place because the party that's going to happen when everyone gets uh, back together again is going to be amazing. Like, you know, like it gets emotional at our residency anyway. I can't even imagine what it's going to be like. Can I get like anyone who's out there who, who knows what I'm talking about? Like, you know, what I, you know what I'm talking about. Like every day that goes on, it's getting more and more intense. Like when I see you all again and can give you a hug and sing a song for you, like, I don't know. We did a live stream. Uh, Dex, uh, you should check it out. It, uh, it's on our it's uh, uh, on the Barely Dead Facebook. And we did a live stream from Milt's studio. And we never thought that we wouldn't have a chance to do another live stream as a band. Within that one week, it became like 10 people shouldn't get together. And like, we're basically 10 people with a tech, you know? And it's, yeah. uh, and it just became something we didn't think that we wouldn't be able to even be around each other. So, uh, you know, now we're in this, uh, this like standstill. You know, I was thinking, yeah. I, I was thinking I needed to get like, uh, uh, do one of these where like my whole band conferences each other like in a conference chain It's like I don't know how deep you can go on a conference with a phone But I think I could conference on one phone at least I can have two people on one phone at least or maybe even three I can do like a four-person conference on one phone and then someone else can do a four-person conference and then someone else can do a four-person conference and I can and those can be the, co the conferences that I pull in so it's like I can conference in three people's conference so I know I, I mean, the math sounds good. It, 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 it sounds crazy, but it'll work. And I don't know what else to do. And maybe we can set up a, a Zoom or whatever it is where we get everyone and we can do a video feed and everyone's there. And it's like something that, that almost just sounds too millennial for me. You know what I mean? And it's not even it's, it's, that sounds Gen Z like Dex. I know we're going to have to get into this at some point. I'm trying to get into a wrap up cadence, damn it. But I don't think I can do it. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I think there's just too much to cover. It's a, it, it's a quarantine, Butsy. We'll have time, but lay it on me. Yeah, well, we got like uh, this whole thing with uh, millennials uh, versus boomers. You know what I mean? And somehow they left Gen X out of it. And I feel like it's our fault, okay? I feel like Gen yeah, I think no, no, but, you know, the boomer's okay. My dad was actually the one who, I tried to tell this to my dad, and he's like, actually, you know, it's still the boomer's fault because, like, we didn't want to give up control. You know what I mean? That was our problem. You know what I mean? We really didn't. You know what I mean? And it's like, I'm like, yeah, but like, you know, we just wanted to watch television. You know what I mean? And so we're not ready to take the ball yet and run with it. Like, you know what I mean? So, and yet, and yet everyone wants to get mad at like, you know, my, at like the, the older generation, but I'm holding myself accountable. Like we're, you know, I'm 45 years old and like I have, I, I should, I should be way further along in my own cause than I am at this point. And I blame myself and I feel like I'm a metaphor for my whole entire uh, generation. You know what I mean? I feel like, uh, you know, we could all like tighten up a little bit. And part of the, you know, part of the fact that like our generation's music, you know, sucks. I mean, sorry. Uh, you know, maybe the po popular music anyway. Uh, it, it's all our fault. It's it's not the boomer's fault. You know, like <laughs> I can tell you that. I mean, maybe it is because they decided to squeeze us out of the out of the uh, out of the business. Yeah. You know, so well, I, I think, don't know. Uh, I think also, you know, it, we're sitting in the middle of the millennial versus boomers thing. It's you know, it's going to get to a point where 
they'll fight it out nice and good, and they'll have their little battle, and we'll step in and say, okay, kids, 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 come on. Well, yeah, you know, it's funny. It's just like we've we've got to like 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 Grandpa Joe has to go and clean up our mess. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, and 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 it would make sense. You know what I mean? He's been shaking his head every time we got into trouble this whole time. <laughs> you know, it's just like that. It's like that. America is just like a spoiled kid right now, a spoiled Gen Xer. Okay, and I don't blame any. I blame us. Okay, don't let it be said. What's wrong with America? I blame me. I guess that's why I'm out here, Dex, because I'm trying to like make up for that. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll put I'll put myself out there because I feel like I deserve I I earned that right by uh you know not doing as much as I could when I was younger and had a chance to like be when I was hungrier. You know what I mean? But guess what? Like I never got fed, so I'm still hungry. You know? Yeah, that's listen. It's a great opportunity for everybody to starve themselves real quick. If you've never felt being hungry. It's a fantastic feeling, not because it feels comfortable, but because it makes the rest of your life more comfortable once you've gotten through it. You know, you gotta if you're not if you're not gonna throw yourself off a skateboard, don't even try to learn how to skateboard. You'll you'll never get there. You know, you gotta you gotta fall down. Why do we fall down? <laughs> to uh, yeah, uh, to get back to learn how to get back up. Well, uh, let me get uh, uh, the Cuba Cuba Gooding Jr. Uh, Robert. Well, that was, uh, that- Oh, go ahead. No, I think the uh, why do we fall down? I think uh, okay, you give it to me because I thought that was the, the Bruce, diving movie. Bruce Wayne. Why do we oh, fall right, down? right, right, right. Same, same, yeah. same quote. But I know, I know the one you're referring to. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going that route. Yeah, you're going that route because <laughs> I didn't think that was one of our movies. That Cuba Gooding Jr. Robert De Niro diving movie. No, it's not. But it's it's one it's one of mine, Dex. You know what I mean? I would it's add it. It's actually a pretty yeah. good. It's a pretty solid flick right there. You know, I, I gotta say. Right now, it'd be a great time for everybody to learn how to make fire from ice. That's there's there's your rabbit hole right there. Yes, yes. I mean, always, of course. Uh, you know, I I, I hear uh, the edge. Of course, is one of my movies, and I always hear that one in my head. You know what I mean? It, any any time I'm put to the test, you know, there's that line at the end. That's what he says. We are all put to the test. You know, just never. And he he says it. He's just never in the fashion that we expect. And uh, that's exactly what's going on right here. But anyway, yeah, we got too much to get into. But uh, I'm going to I'm going to tap out here because, uh, you know, I actually uh, I'm getting uh, hungry. You know what I mean? I want to talk about hungry. But that's what that was what I was going to say a second ago is that uh, quarantine agrees with my diet. I've been on a diet and I'm trying not to eat. And like, and when it when it comes to like late at night and I'm hungry, like maybe I would have gone to like the convenience store and grabbed some like even just something uh, you know benign like unsalted cashews, but I'm definitely not even like going for the unsalted cashews because I need to save money and I also uh, don't want to deal with the outside world. It's like yeah. literal uh, Mission Impossible out there. Like I hear the music, I, like I'm like I, I almost feel like I have to put on like a bandit's clothing. You know what I mean? Like like an eye mask or something and run around like, uh, you know, <laughs> with like uh, with silent movie piano music, you know, just inspire social distancing. <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly, like I said, I, I, I think more people should go should go out in, uh, you know, in like bizarre protective clothing, because like all of these things, <laughs> except like a real sealed mask, uh, just don't work. You know what I mean? So like, Not for so, us. right. So right. That's the other thing. Uh, I'm I'm contemplating what my uh, what my face would look like with just minus just the hair, that, just uh, the middle, yeah, just, just the middle. You just got to really, it's just it's just a lineup. You know what I mean? You just got to go to that barber shop and just be like, all right, just circle this and then get rid of enough for it to make contact on the skin. Yeah, just the line, and then I'll just be walking just around. Just the circle. Yeah, just it. the circle. <laughs> It'll almost. What was that movie? Oh, it was a uh, police uh, police academy where they uh, put the marker ring around. Uh, uh, what is his name? Lieutenant uh, Harris. Yeah. Yeah. It was around yeah, Harris's Harris. megaphone, and uh, it left a ring around his mouth. I feel like it'll look like that. I love that. Dude. Yeah. I miss those days, dude. All right, I'm gonna play my outro music. Right. You're not gonna hear it, but uh, Dex, I'm gonna say goodbye to you here. We're gonna check back in and uh, just stay safe out there. Uh, let me know uh, what's happening as soon as you can. Yeah, for sure. Later to you, later to Listenship, later to uh, D-Vibes, and later to Ricky, man. What a great guest. What a great guest. And uh, and, and uh, same to you, Dex. Uh, what a great guest, and I am so glad to be able to do 
shouldn't have taken a you know like the world gone mad and a quarantine <laughs> quarantine earth shouldn't have taken that but you know here we are we're doing radio again that's pretty cool quarantine radio yes all right dex have a good one peace out bucky yep see you soon see you soon <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived at the end of the Michael Butler uh, bus show, quarantine show, quarantine radio, quarantine studios, quarantine. We're not really quarantined, by the way. You know what I mean? Like, but uh, it's just important to sort of understand that you should think you're quarantined because it's like that extreme mentality is going to keep us all safe. So that's kind of what I'm branding into your your head with uh, with that name, Quarantine Radio. Is for all intents and purposes, we're we're shut off here. You know, we're shut off in our own little worlds. That's the way to do this, and this is how we're going to reach out to each other is through all of these platforms. You know, uh, I'm out here. You know, this same platform I'm talking to you. Uh, if you're seeing me, you can reach out to me. You know. Honestly, I'm talking to as many people as I can. It's the one thing that's really keeping me sane. Uh, the other thing is John Lammy, ladies and gentlemen. He is the man. He has kept me sane. I uh, am determined, John, by the way. Your time, like, like the Borg, that microphone in front of you is coming. You may not have to use it that much. Uh, the camera's coming. You know what I mean? Or like, you know, like you can like throw it in as a as like when i talk to you you can hit the button and put your camera in the corner you know if it, it just will limit you if you feel you know he, he's just uh, i think what we're doing here he doesn't want to like bring the heat on you do you know what i mean it's like people were looking at your pictures okay wait a minute i have to start my music again i'm not nearly done yet all right so yeah i mean i think uh yeah i'm not i people yeah i'm not done yet i'm not done with my outro and i'm not done with you okay uh, yeah, and we're, we're not going to be done with you because uh, you're, uh, you're far more uh, interesting than uh, most of uh, everybody. So, all right. So anyway, and uh, of course, you are what's keeping me sane here. So thank you. Uh, we are broadcasting out of uh, Quarantine Studios, a.k.a. Lammy Sound. And uh, Lammy, maybe we could throw that Venmo up, you know? Uh, Venmo is a B-U-T-Z show, butts show. Uh, you know, if you want to buy me and John a sandwich, like we'll we're definitely splitting anything that uh, comes through here, and uh, we'll we appreciate anything you can do for us. So uh, thank you for tuning in, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow. I got you know this is where we are, and this is where we're at. As long as I can come up here, I'm gonna come up here and do a, a podcast. And if I can't come up here, I'll do it from wherever I can because uh, the emergency uh, butts cast system has been created. And uh, we'll be there for us in our time of need. But let's hope we never need, because this is chill. I like it here. I like doing this. Uh, but I can't wait for the day when I can take a day off. Right? You know, when I can feel like maybe I will take a day off. But like when I like can't like sh you know when it's all over. You know what I'm saying. Anyway. Thanks for tuning in today. Thank you, Richard James. Uh, and, uh, you know, D-Vibes, Dex, Lammy. Oh, by the way, I'm going to play a song by Neighbor uh, on the way out, Stranger Part of Town. So uh, keep that uh, stream rolling. Thanks for tuning in.
bye-bye. But just right then and there, my telephone started ringing. She told me I could stay if it was just her night.
This darkness has got to give.